Hello there, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Nikon, and in this video we're going to take a look at how you can do a burst capture within Control My Nikon. Now burst capture is real handy when you want to capture a lot of images in an extremely short amount of time. A large amount of images are captured, buffered on the body, and then they're transferred at the end of the burst. So let's go up to the workflows menu, and I'm currently connected to a D800 here up to workflows and down to burst. Your captured burst images will appear here and will also appear in your image browser. The first thing we need to do is enable it. And then we select the number of and then we select the number of images we want to capture. Now you can see here it's allowing the D800 to capture 21 images. However, this is dependent on the size of the buffer in the body, so less expensive Nikon bodies have a smaller memory buffer, so they'll be able to capture less images in a row or in a burst. But it also depends on the format. So if I put this to small JPEGs, you'll see this is increased. Now I can capture 40. And if I go to raw plus JPEG, fine, maximum size on the JPEGs. Now the maximum is 14. So the larger and the more images you have, the more it fills that buffer. So I'm just going to set it for five images now. I'll put it back to fine, large size. Now the next thing you need to do is go over to the camera body and change the mode from single shot to continuous shot. Most bodies have a physical lever or a dial to do this, and there'll often be a continuous high speed and continuous low speed mode. Here I've selected continuous low speed. I'm currently in live view looking at this radiometer. So we'll capture a burst of five images of this. Now you can be in live view while you start the burst. However, it'll close live view for you, take the burst and re-enable live view. So I'll just close it for now. But take careful note of the focus, because there's going to be a problem with the focus. Fortunately, we have a workaround. Here we go. Okay, looking in the image browser, here I can see the first image is in focus, and I'll bring it full screen. Looks good. But the other ones, not in focus. You look at the file names, you see that a burst is placed in its own subfolder. By default, we have Z images as the main folder. And when you use subfolders here, it will make one of these. So burst underscore year, month, day, underscore hour, minute, second. So if I was to do another burst, makes another folder. If you were to take this subfolders checkmark off, it will just make a burst subfolder under images and it will put them all in there for, for subsequent captures. Okay, and notice how they are numbered. So that's 17 to 21. And it's using now the main counter or the MCT token, which you'll see right here. So every subsequent burst just increases the counter. So it's up to you whether you want to have a dedicated subfolder with its own counter. I prefer to use a dedicated subfolder just to keep everything separate. Because bursts are normally meant to be kept as a set of images. But back to the focus. So when we went into the image capture we saw from live view that it was in focus, but the subsequent captures were out of focus. So what happens is, and this is a quirk of the Nikon firmware, is when you do a continuous capture or a burst capture, first shot will use whatever focus you're currently in. But the subsequent shots during that burst will cause an autofocus for every shot. 
and it'll try to do a phase autofocus. So it could be that the phase autofocus settings on this particular body have it maybe trying to focus up here, maybe corresponding to those squares that you see in the viewfinder where you target your focus. But regardless, it's not very useful if only the first one is in focus. So the workaround for this is to disable autofocus. You go to the body and you flip the switch to manual focus and then this will not be a problem. We'll give that a try. First of all, I'll go back in the live view and set the focus. And now I'll flip the switch to manual. Okay, it's set the manual focus, so let's try another capture. So this time, they're all in focus. And I'll just bring it up full screen, I'll hit F, then press the right arrow key, just to cycle through these. Looks good. Okay, press F again to close it. So that's how you capture a burst. Now, you can also link this with a trigger. So if I was to go to a trigger, you could use a web trigger using a shoot action. And we have a separate tutorial video on how to do triggers. But um, if you set the action to shoot and you have the body set to continuous, then it'll use whatever settings you have here to shoot a burst. And a good example of this would be a motion trigger. And it could be that you have a scene maybe at a bird feeder and you want to capture a burst of images when the bird lands at the feeder. So you point your camera out the window there and you draw a target here using the motion detection system. And then whenever motion is detected in this target, and I'll just simulate this here by decreasing the sensitivity, it's going to fire a burst. And you just also need to make sure that you still have burst enabled. Here it goes. So now you have five images of that bird landing at your feeder. But you can use this with any of the triggers. We have separate tutorial videos for each one of these triggers. Okay, I'll close the motion trigger and back to the burst workflow. So now that we have some images that we've captured, you can also navigate around these images using this little browser here. This is like a little mini browser as opposed to the main browser, which is over here. Now to see more, you can drag this wider. This is a maximum width. So now I could see all five images I've captured, and I can use the mouse wheel to move in between them. I can use this. And I can use the right and left arrow key just to view the different images. Now you can also view these full screen. So if you go up here, and the reason for that is it could be that you have your image browser on something else and you want to have this separate. So if you want to see this one full screen, you just go here, right click, and toggle full screen. And you can use your right arrow key here as well, left arrow keys to navigate through your captured burst. By default, you can bring that up with the W key and press W again to close it. And those shortcuts are configurable in the keyboard shortcuts window. You can also force the image browser to show this. You see it's now the same. You can send this to editing in an external editor, which will use the editor that is associated with the file extension. Now in the thumb strip, you can do some things. You can flag an image. Maybe you want to come back to that and see the flagged image. Could be a keeper or maybe one you want to get rid of. The synchronization, when it's checked, means that as an image is downloaded from your camera, it'll immediately be shown on the viewer. Keeping browser in sync, when you click here, it also changes what you see on the browser. So you could do things like detach the browser and move it to another monitor and just navigate in the smaller view you see here and see everything full screen on the other monitor. 
and we have convert to high quality. And this will go back to the image and just do a little bit better job with the generation of the histogram and the smaller preview image, which you see here. Normally you don't need to convert them to high quality. You can delete the image or you can press the delete key on the keyboard to do the same thing. You can browse, which changes the folder here. You can refresh, which reloads all the images shown here from the database. And you can configure it. So right now I have the thumbnail and the file name. So maybe you'd also like to see a histogram for each one. And uh, let's say the exposure information. And you could change the order of this. I'll put the file name at the end. Then you close it, and you can resize this. This resizes the thumb strip, and this resizes the top part. So now you can see some additional information. And as you can see, there's a lot of different data fields that you can put here, including dimensions, aperture, shutter, maker notes from the manufacturer, such as a shutter count, IPTC data that you may embed. I'm just going to return it back to where it was. So I'll just double click here to move it out. Double click histogram, thumbnail, file name. Resize it. and it'll remember those settings when you save the profile. So I'm just going to go control S to save the profile. And the current image that is being displayed, the full path is right here. And the image number and the set number. So it's uh, image three of five, image five of five. Even though you have the burst workflow up, if you disable this, then click on this, you get a single capture. But once it's enabled, this button or this button is going to give you a burst. And I'll close my burst workflow. And that's it. That's how you capture a burst in Control Man Icon. Happy tethering.